The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. streets will never love you back. What's up, guys? Well, I got another story for you. This is a prison story. You know, I did time back in the day. I got over 13 years of my life in jail. And I look back and it is a waste of time. I tell you, you know, every day we are we try to buy time and we can't, time runs out sooner or later, you know? And uh, there's, there is a lot of guys in jail that uh, I left in prison and uh, they never ever gonna see the daylight ever. But you know what? Everyone has their own story in life and everyone has a different story in life, you know? I came forward for the fact of, you know, I don't wanna live that life no more. They killed my friend Paulie while I was away. I was involved in with Tommy Reynolds, kills a woman by accident, something that bothered me for a long time. I kept my mouth shut while I was in prison for a long time. And then I came home, guys are rolling. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing this no more. I want to be free. I don't want this life no more. The government took me and here I am now talking to you guys I'm very lucky in life. I really am. And I understand that. I have new friends. Thank God for the choices we make. That's why it's very important with the choices we make in life. It really is. It's very important. You got to make the right decisions if you want to excel and fix your life and do the right thing with it. Because time goes by so fast. By the time you know it, you're getting older and older and older. And people are passing away. And life just flies by. It really does. I remember when I was a young kid just walking into the prison system. And, uh, you know, my first bid, I did 90 days Rikers Island. I was 19 years old. And from there, I went to Bear Hill. Then later on, at the age of 23 and a half, I caught a bank robbery and went away again. Now, prison can also save you. You know, as you're in prison, you can get smart. Certain events happen uh, in the street that you weren't there, and they might have saved you. You know, but who wants to go to prison and take your freedom from you? Nobody. I mean, there's nothing nice about prison. That's for sure. You know, in prison... You have a cellie you have to sell with. You eventually, you're going to, you know, you have a toilet bowl in your cell. You have to put a sheet up when you use the bathroom. You got to smell the other guy's feet or shit when he takes his shit. And uh, you got to stand up count. Every day, 4 o'clock, you got to stand up. You got to uh, take orders from the guards. So there's nothing nice about prison, you know. I mean, it's a learning experience where if you do go, you know, you can learn from it. But there's really, I don't wish it on nobody. I really don't. You know, I wish I could get that time back, but obviously you can't. But I want to get into this because there is one guy I'm here to talk about today. This guy is Joe Lika. Joe Lika is... He was uh, an Albanian big shot out of Brooklyn. He uh, was in the dope business. He was a rootless guy out of New York City. He was a street boss. And eventually he got picked up and they charged him with an 848 drug kingpin. And he was involved in a lot of murders. He was a serious guy. This is one of the uh, toughest Albanians I ever ran into in prison. And I met him in Lewisburg Penitentiary, okay? 
I'm going to tell Pitcher up. You're going to see who he is. Just give me a minute. Now, Joey Lika was a kingpin of a highly fed New York City based uh, mob that moved over $100 million worth of dope through California. It was actually Turkish dope. California, Texas, Illinois in the 80s. And these guys were very serious criminals. I mean, they annihilate you and kill you in a hoppy. You know, they weren't playing around. And the operation was dubbed the Albanian Connection. This guy was a real Albanian, none of this bullshit. I mean, this guy really did a lot of work. He was a serious character. This guy was into killing politicians. He put a hit out on Rudy Giuliani. That's how serious this guy was. And Lika was not afraid of Italians. He was not afraid of nobody. And he put a price out on the head of politicians, law enforcement members. He would step to anybody that wanted it. He was not afraid of nobody. He had no fear in him. And you know what? When I met him in prison, he was the same way. His hitters were extremely loyal and would let it go for their boss, no hesitation. They would do anything for him, the people that he had around him. So Joe Lico was a wild man, you know? And when you're in the street, eventually you think that life is never going to end. But it ends because law enforcement, when they come get you, they bang the door down, they flip you over, they hit you, whatever they got to do, they tie you up, put cuffs on you, and you ain't going to beat them. It's impossible. So this is a photo I want to share with you about going to Lewisburg at the age of 23 years old. I met Joe Lika, and Joe Lika was a gentleman in prison, short guy, maybe 5'7", five, 5'8", five, stocky, and he'll kill you in a minute. He got a life big in Lewisburg Penitentiary, and he'll stab anybody, kill anybody. And that's one thing about, you know, I went to jail with a five-year bid with the feds. I had four to eight. I was running concurrent on top of that. After the feds, I had to go down to the state. But these guys who got life bids, that's their life now. You know, they'll just kill somebody to make an appearance in court, just to get out of court, get out of the prison. It's like a vacation to get out of prison and go to another prison and then come back, you know, get a visit, come back with some stuff. But that's how a lot of prisoners think. But uh, Joe Lika was a tough guy to the end, and he's still in prison, and uh, he's not getting out. So, uh, you know, all you kids or gangbangers, tough guys that are watching this, I'm telling you, look, that street life is dead. It's over. Do the right thing, and you'll excel. But let me throw this picture up, and I'll explain to you who's in the picture, okay? Now... In this photo, if you see, this is Kid Richie. Richie was a guy from Queens. He was from the Crash and Carry case. And uh, what they used to do was they would smash windows, jewelry windows, bank windows, and just smash and grab. And uh, he was a wild kid. He did a lot of time. I was actually with him in Otisville. And then eventually we followed each other to Lewisburg Penitentiary. And I think he's still in prison. He should be coming home soon. But he was a career criminal. But a nice guy. This is me, Jimmy Calandra. As you see, I have a shirt over here that was made up. I used to, you know, buy shirts off of other inmates. They used to make them. And, uh. What I'm doing is I have Michael Perna over here. Michael Perna was a wise guy out of New Jersey, New Jersey crew. And I was selling with him, Michael Perna. Michael Perna passed away, I think last year or the year before. But Michael Perna was a sweetheart of a guy. He was a, a gentleman, class act. I actually got to speak to some of his family members when I was doing time with him in Lewisburg. And uh, 
I was in J Block. I had the bottom bunk, and Michael Perna comes in. I didn't know Michael Perna from the street, but when he came in, he was friendly with a lot of guys. As you see, there's some wise guys over here. I'll be naming all these guys in this photo. And he comes and he sells with me. Now, the top bunk is open. I want to give Michael Perna the bottom bunk. And he says, no, Jimmy, this is your cell. I want you to have the bottom bunk. I'm going to take the top bunk. I said, no, Mike, I insist. He said, no, Jimmy, I insist. I want you to. I said, no, Mike, it ain't right. And he would not take the bottom bunk. But anyway, he's a hell of a guy, class act. This is Phil Vestler. Okay, Phil was a dope guy, a lot of drugs. Over here is Patty Della Russo. You know, I spent a lot of time with Patty Della Russo. Patty Della Russo was with me in Otisville. From Otisville, we went to Lewisburg. Then from Lewisburg, we went to McKean. So any stories you hear about out there that are, are false and fake, because I did time with all these guys. And when you do time with people, everything follows you to the street. You know, I hung around a lot of good guys when I was away. And this is uh, Frankie Steele. Frankie Steele's a nice guy. This is Michael Sessa. He's a wise guy. With the Colombo crew and Patty Della Russo is also a wise guy out of the uh, Lucchese family. He's now the underboss of the Lucchese family. So this is Michael Sessa. As I said the other day, Carmine Sessa, his own brother, testified against him. Imagine that. Imagine your own brother testifying against you. I mean, that's some really sick shit. This is Nick the Greek. Nick the Greek was in a couple photos with me the other day. I showed them on YouTube. And Nick the Greek was a bank robber. He was also in J Block on the second tier. And he used to talk to me about bank robberies all the time. And I told him that when I did the Stan Al Moore, because the Stan Al Moore was always a mystery. Nobody knew who did the Stan Al Moore. But uh, I actually told Sally Fusco and Michael Bloom, because I did some time with them in Aldersville. And when I told them, they said, you're the one who did that? I said, yeah, I did that. They said, holy shit, we've been wondering who did that. Nobody never knew who did the Stan Allen Mall. But that was me, Chris, Tommy Reynolds, Gerard, and the Kid Willie. So uh, and then we got Richard Brady. Richard Brady has changed his life around. I think he's a minister now. Anyway, his wife and my ex, Lori, used to come up in Lewisburg all the time together from Brooklyn, and they would drive up to Lewisburg and we would get visits together. I actually graduated with Richard Brady. I'm going to show you this photo too. We graduate, we, we graduated together in Lewisburg Penitentiary. This is when we both received our GED. You walk up to the podium in the movie theater, they give you a GED, you say a couple of things, boom, and then you walk away. But that's a Lewisburg Penitentiary photo right there where I graduated. I mean, it's pretty cool, you know. I don't think I would have ever graduated on the street. So at least I did something with my life. As I was spending my time in prison, I was very productive. Thanks to Manny Madonna, he put me in the right direction. So getting back to this photo, that's Richard Brady. He's an Irish guy, beautiful family, all girls, beautiful. This is, uh, I forgot his name. Anyway, he's like a workout guy. This is Phil. Actually, this is Vic from Chicago. I was in another photo with him the other day. Phil from Chicago. I think he was a wise guy out of Chicago. And this right here is Joe Lika. Joe Lika right here. This is him. Now, Joe Lika was a serious character. What he did was, uh, you know, he's with the Albanians. He was an Albanian. And this guy was ruthless. He did not care about anyone. He would kill you in a minute. He was moving the Turkish dope. And uh, this guy made like $100 million worth of money. But you know what? You could never, ever spend all that money. You know? And uh, he was a street boss for the Albanian mafia. Okay? And they charged him as a kingpin. He was the Albanian connection. 
in the 1980s based on the volcano, the movie suit, the uh, New York City uh, dope mob consisting of men who like himself, women afraid of Italians, Costa Nostra. I mean, this guy was fed. Everybody fed this guy. He did a lot of work out there. And uh, he was uh, a really tough guy, honestly. This guy was a tough guy. He's got a life bid. And uh, when I did time with him, very friendly guy. But I'll tell you right now, he's the type of guy, when you stand in front of him, if you're on, say, the child line, and you step on his toes by accident, you better say, I'm sorry and excuse me because he will stick a knife in your throat very quick. And this is what is in the prison system today. So, you know, going to prison at the age of 23, it was an experience. I did experience a lot of loss too. I lost a lot of people while I was in prison. When I was in prison, my grandmother passed away. They killed Paulie G. Uh, my father got cancer. I never, ever got to go see my father. I never went to his wake because uh, I was a high, I was a max, and they wouldn't let me. So, uh, you know, all these things that happen while you're sitting in prison that you think could never happen, and your heart is broken, and you're breaking someone else's heart, you know, people you love. You know, and this is something that I acknowledge the mistakes I did, but I can't take back. Well, you know, I just really wanted to throw this video out there quick. I mean, this is, uh, for me, this photo is a beautiful photo because it tells a thousand memories of all these guys I spent time with. And at that time, as you see, I got a smile on my face. See that smile? You know, I'm happy that we are all in a photo together. Michael Perna, he was a hell of a guy. He's a wise guy. When I was a kid, I looked up to these guys, wise guys. Uh, Michael Sessa was a wise guy, and Patty Della Russo was a wise guy. These guys were all made guys. And uh, doing time, I did time because I had an Italian last name, and I was from Brooklyn, and I was underneath some people in the street. And I was a part of the Beth Avenue crew. You get friendly with these people. They take you underneath their wing. And you make new friends. The prison is like a college. Okay? It doesn't make you uh, necessarily smarter. But you network with other criminals. And it opens up other doors. And if you get friendly with these guys, they take a liking into you. Eventually, you know what? If that's the life you want to get into, they will straighten you out, saying they'll say nice things about you. And someday you'll find yourself in the mob, which is not a good thing. You know, being in the mob today is definitely not a good thing. It wasn't ever a good thing. You know, being your own man today, I think that is a good thing, you know. But uh, I wanted to share that with you. I hope you like that photo. I know I put the photo up. I'm trying to get it to the side. I'm learning a little as I go along, you know, but I'm going to show a quick photo over here too. Of uh, Now, this is a photo of me in Lewisburg. Now, this is my ex-girl. I was with this girl for 20 years, 19 years, 20 years. She did a bid with me. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, when you, when you go away to prison, I'm just letting you know, you know, you don't have a woman no more, okay? You don't have family, okay? You got to get on the phone for people to send you money. Uh, you're basically by yourself. You can't trust nobody, okay? So if something's bothering you or, you know, you have to talk to somebody, anyone you talk to, they're going to probably... Put your business in someone else's ear. So it's, you're by yourself, you know, and, uh, you know, you're just, you're lost, you know, because nobody 
is going to love you the way your family loves you. I come from a very good family, no criminals in my family, but because of the neighborhood I grew up, grew up in, I became a product of that environment and I went the wrong way in life. And once I realized I was a greater force than my mother, nobody's ever going to stop me. You know, that's why it's very important to have direction, to have a father figure that tells you, you know what, take the sanitation test, uh, you know, take some kind of uh, course, do something with your life. Don't waste it. The time goes by so fast. And I remember there was a couple guys when I was a kid and we used to cut out of school and they would say, what are you doing? Why are not you in school? I said, we're cutting out. They said, well, you know what? Go to school. I said, how about you? Did you go to school? And they said, no. So why should I go to school? But I understand what they were saying now. You know, stay in school and become something with your life. Because uh, life goes by really fast. And by the time you know it, look at me, I'm 52. And it flies by. I feel like I'm 25, but, you know, there's a beginning and there's an end. And I'm at the point in my life, what I want to do is I want to do the right thing. I actually was just talking to a friend of mine about taking a, a couple of online courses of criminology. You know, I want to excel and, uh, you know, become better. I want my children to look at me someday and say, wow, look at my father. Yeah, you know what? He did this. He did A, B, and C. But you know what? At the end, he changed it around and he became a better person by it. That's what I want to do. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, also, tomorrow night, I'm going to have Vincent Giganti's daughter, Rita Giganti, on. Vincent Giganti was the boss of the Genovese crime family. So hopefully you guys are going to be there. She wrote the book, uh, Godfather's Daughter. So, uh, you know, I got some more questions for her. It's going to be very interesting tomorrow at 7 p.m. And next week, I'm going to have Tommy Dates back on. We're going to be talking about a couple guys, uh, Jerry Papa and his son, John Papa. And uh, Tommy Dades knows a lot about them. We're going to talk about all the murders that Jerry Papa did. There's a lot of murders that people don't talk about. And, you know, back in the day, these guys, people don't understand that, you know what, Jerry Papa did a lot of cocaine. These guys did a lot of cocaine coming up. There was a lot of cocaine going on back then, you know. And people say, no, no, they don't do cocaine. Uh, you know, it's just like a lot of guys say they don't eat pussy. They're so full of shit, you know. And if you don't eat pussy, your girl's probably leaving you. You know, so believe me, it's all a bunch of bullshit. But, uh, you know, these wise guys did a lot of cocaine. I know uh, Eddie Lino used to do a lot of cocaine. All these guys did a lot of drugs. All the guys I was around in my neighborhood that had maybe 12 years on me, Georgie Conti, Frankie Mericanda, Scotty Fabiano, they all did a lot of cocaine. And these guys turned us on to cocaine. And I'll also be speaking about that. Okay. And that's how little Georgie became addicted to drugs. Charlie Tuna too. He's another guy who turned us on to cocaine. You know, they were there for us, but they taught us a lot of bad habits. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. With that said, everyone, have a great weekend tomorrow night. I hope you're going to be there to support me and Rita Giganti. It's going to be a good one. And uh, I'll see you in my next video, guys. Okay? I love you guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed. It's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back.